Hey guys, I hope you're all good. I'm Tambi and today's video we're talking all things weddings and the things that people don't tell you about weddings. Just some really important tips and things that I just wish I knew before my brother got married. This video is definitely going to help the girls because it's going to be aimed at uh, all things like skincare, hair care, nail care, outfits, jewellery, makeup, all of those sorts of tips. The first thing I wanted to say is when it comes to a wedding, deciding your outfits and your looks, like your hair and your makeup, it can be really overwhelming because you just don't know where to start. What I would recommend doing is just on Instagram, whenever you're scrolling through and you might see an outfit you like or someone's makeup that's really nice, just save it. And on Instagram, you can save things into separate folders or collections, I think they're called. So just have one for like Indian wedding or have one for makeup or have one for Indian outfits. And like literally whenever you see something you like, just save it as part of that collection. So I've actually got my Instagram up to show you. I don't know if you guys can see because the spring light is quite bright. But if you go on the three lines at the top, and you go on saved here it'll come up with all my collections and this one for example is all the Indian outfits that I have saved across the years and it just gives me a really good inspo for when I'm looking to buy a new outfit and I think I was doing this literally from two years ago not necessarily for my brother's wedding but just because when the time comes and I needed to buy a new Indian outfit it's like I kind of already knew what I was seeing and what I liked it's a lot easier to pick things like outfits out when you kind of already know what things you like or a colour you're going for or just a style like it just gives you a starting point the other thing I would say is Pinterest Pinterest is your best friend when it comes to planning your wedding looks you can search anything into Pinterest and it comes up with thousands of images and ideas and it leads you on to another thousand images and ideas and you can get so lost in the world of Pinterest but I love it because you can find so much inspo, there's so much creativity on there. So if I go on my Pinterest again just to show you, this is my Pinterest but I have one for makeup, I have one for hairstyles, I've even got one for nails because I didn't know what nails I wanted for the wedding and yeah you can literally just pin all different hairstyles for example that I've done um, and it kind of helped me to start putting some looks and ideas together but also when your hair artist comes to do your hair you can literally be like okay like I want this hair and they've got something to work with as well because it really helps them to give them a base as well so Pinterest is your best friend Instagram is your best friend use social media to your advantage we're so lucky with how many ideas and resources we have to plan things like wedding outfits and looks so yeah use social media it is honestly such a blessing i'm going to talk about hair now so i would 100 percent recommend getting extensions for your wedding looks whether you have short hair whether you have long hair i think unless you have super super thick hair which is amazing and i'm very jealous it's just a lot better to style with more length and more thickness in your hair so i ordered hair extensions and you've got to make sure to get the right color and also the length but don't be afraid to ask your hairstylist for these sorts of recommendations my hairstylist is styles by suki and she's honestly amazing like i don't think i'll ever ask anyone to do my hair other than Suki. But she gave me a list of all these different hair extension companies that she recommends. I got mine from Clip Hair and they're really, really good. Um, I'll put in the name of the company here so you know what to type. Um, they're affordable because hair extensions are expensive but that's because if you look after them, you can use them for years. So don't be alarmed when you look at the prices of them because they are worth it. And yeah, I use the same hair extensions for all of my looks, whether it was straight, curly, wave. So definitely worth the investment. Also ask your hairstylist how they want your hair when they turn up. The last thing you want is for them to turn up and your hair is frizzy or it's greasy. Some hairstylists prefer you to wash your hair one day before, two days before. Some prefer you to have it wet when they get there. Like honestly these are things that you just don't think about but if you can just ask them in advance it saves you so much hassle on the day but also make sure you're doing all your hair prep like months in advance so make sure you're looking after your hair doing your hair oils you're doing your hair masks you're just generally looking after your hair so that it just looks its best and healthiest on the big day next i'm going to talk about nails now this gave me such anxiety because Indian outfits, as we know, are just so colourful. It's really hard to just pick up one single colour that goes with all the outfits. So I personally got 
a French manicure ombre almond shape nail and I'll try to put a picture up here so you guys can see what I got but I just felt like French manicures obviously go with everything they're really classy they're really elegant and yeah you just don't need to worry about them clashing with any colors I recommend getting something like that if you wish otherwise maybe something like silver gold like something that goes with Indian outfits the only problem with that is that you have to be so careful with the food you eat now Indian food as we know we love to eat with our hands but if there is anything yellow or food coloring in that food and you have any French tips or white nails they're gonna go yellow so please please use spoons for whatever you need to do if you have your nails done for the wedding because there's so many events you can't really afford to be getting yellow nails on day one next I want to talk about body care and that is like hair removal exfoliation all that good stuff so with Indian outfits of course like your arms might be out, your stomach area might be out if you're wearing a lenga. And you just wanna make sure that you're looking and feeling your best. And I think body care honestly starts months in advance. It's definitely worth just thinking about getting some laser hair removal sessions before or regularly exfoliating and moisturizing just so that your skin is really really smooth and supple and it glows in the pictures. And then the only other thing I would say about body care is that get something like a shimmer spray or a body glow type product now your makeup artist might come with one or ask them if they don't you can get one for yourself but oh my god this made the biggest difference to me for my looks we literally put body i don't know what it's called but it's like body shimmer glitter thing all over like my arms my shoulders my chest area and in the pictures my skin was glowing it was glowing in the sun it was glowing during the day it was glowing at night it just made the whole look just Come together so i would definitely recommend getting that there's so many different types you can get the iconic sprays you can get the huda beauty one even sanctuary spa has like a tub of moisturizer which naturally has shimmery pigments in it and that is literally five pounds so just get something that's going to make you glow and feel extra glittery and special on the wedding days last but not least when it comes to like beauty i want to talk about skincare now i have really problematic skin and i wanted to make sure that my skin was at its best or as best as it could be for all the events and it's honestly really stressful because I have hormonal acne so you can't really control that but I also had more cystic acne like during Christmas time so I made sure that I spoke to my dermatologist literally right at the beginning of the year in January to make sure that I was on the right skincare so that by March time for the wedding like my skin was actually looking and feeling good and obviously you have makeup and it will make you feel more beautiful and more confident if it does but ultimately if the texture of your skin or if you've got spots underneath like that sort of stuff can't really be covered um, and things like texture so you really want to get to like the root cause and get good skincare in place and as we all know skincare takes time it's not like an overnight fix so you want to make sure you have a good routine when it comes to skincare in place like I would say six months before the big day so yeah invest in a good skincare routine speak to skincare specialists to get a good skin plan in place to get products that really work for your skin type and also i would recommend getting some regular facials before as well and that's something i was doing regularly for the last six months and it genuinely did make a difference and i felt confident in my natural skin so that when the makeup went on top i felt like 10 out of 10 on all of the events okay now i want to talk about the outfits jewelry shoes and Honestly, I had such a headache with picking outfits for my brother's wedding. Now, I know they all did look really nice in the end and it luckily all came together. But we were originally meant to fly to India to do all our outfits. So I hadn't really like thought about doing anything here. And I was just going to go there for a week and just get everything sorted. And I just didn't need to worry. Because of COVID, we unfortunately weren't able to travel to India when we wanted to go. And we decided it was best just to start looking here because we didn't know who would be able to go. And I'm glad I did because we didn't go in the end. I literally spent, I think, weekends upon weekends for like three months straight between Wembley and Southall and Green Street. And yeah, I just wanted to start early. And that is the first tip I've got to give you. Start early. You can never start too early when it comes to Indian outfit shopping. And I mean a year, if not like six months. Because even if you find the perfect outfit six months ahead of the wedding, you've still got to allow for it to be tailored, adjusted multiple times. You've got to allow to find jewellery and start talking about the looks with the makeup artists and so you can just never have your outfits ready too early. My second tip, and this is obviously really subjective, don't feel like you need to go for design outfits and I feel quite strongly against this because I'm very much of the impression like a lot of the outfits, especially if it's a close family wedding, you will probably wear once and may not ever be able to wear them again or like very many times after that. So I personally think 
you don't need to be spending thousands and thousands of pounds on outfits you can save money and you can still get really nice outfits that are relatively affordable yes the quality is going to be different and i admit that because I wore a couple of designer and a couple of high street outfits for the wedding and the quality is incomparable and the service is incomparable but at the end of the day I did end up saving thousands of pounds by having two high street outfits. I got those two high street outfits from Mongers and I would say they do generally have the most affordable and the best choice when it comes to outfits. If you follow me on Instagram you know my experience with Mongers was just not a fun one and I was literally back there every single weekend for like five weeks straight because they were just not getting it right with the tailoring like once they make a sale i feel like that service is really questionable and it can definitely do with some improvements and the staff some of them aren't the best but if you go there ask for someone called Vandana and i know she works on saturdays and sundays so she's amazing and she's the only reason why all my outfits came together mongas is a very good place to buy affordable high street outfits but please allow time please be prepared for them to mess outfits up sometimes like that is the risk you take because you are paying a lot less but for me it was worth it in the end but i allowed enough time the next thing i would say is consider if you want to coordinate colors with the bride and groom or if you're the bride and groom if you want to tell people what colors are off limits of the ones you're wearing tell them this in advance to avoid any sort of conflicts or people buying outfits and then not being able to wear them because that's really unfortunate so definitely have a think about themes and colors and if you don't want to worry about any of that then please just be open-minded to anyone wearing anything they want the last thing i would say is if you do want to go for a designer outfit what you get is what you pay for and i wore two ekta solanki outfits and those outfits were absolutely phenomenal like they were beautiful they made me feel like a princess they were such good quality like i didn't have to worry about it itching and scratching and with the mongols outfits i did like i have scratches here i don't know if you can see from some of those outfits um but yeah the designer ones well especially ekta solanki because i can only talk from my experience with her that's the only designer i wore she's incredible and i will rave on about her forever because my experience with her was one that I will continue and continue and continue to rave about and go back to and spend money on because she was so, so good. She sketched everything from scratch with the colors that I spoke about, with these sort of styles because I really wanted like modern and young vibes and she just made my visions come to life and if not, a hundred times better. The fitting was incredible. I went for one fitting and it fit like a glove. So she really knows what she's doing with her measurements and her tailoring. She sent me pictures of the outfit being made throughout because she's got her own workshop in India. And she just made me feel so safe and secure and I trusted her. Whereas Mongus was like the complete opposite experience and I was getting so stressed out the entire time. So yeah, when it comes to outfits, what you get is definitely what you pay for. So definitely bear that in mind. Next thing I want to talk about is shoes. Now, shoes is a tricky one because obviously there are so many different like Indian style shoes. But I personally think you don't see shoes when you wear saris and lengas so go with what's comfortable and i mean this because on these events you are on your feet you are walking around for hours and hours on end and if you're not comfy it can really like ruin the day and put a downer on it for you so wear what you're comfortable in make sure you've kind of decided shoes even before you've got the outfits because when you go to get your outfits they can tailor the skirt to fit your length and so if you want to kind of know roughly how high your heels are take them with you everywhere so you can wear your outfits with them and that is a really really key piece of advice because if you take six inch heels you only end up wearing three inch heels your outfits are just going to be too long for you choose comfort definitely when it comes to shoes right now i'm going to talk about makeup artists and hair artists and I know I'm very very lucky to be in the position that I'm in because I've worked with so many as I've modelled and I've collabed with a lot on social media so I really really know who I like and the ones that I went for were people that have done me before many times I trust them with my life I trust them with my face with my hair like I can tell them what I want and I know that they will do that times 10 and it's really important you feel that way about your hair and makeup artist because if you don't it can make you really stressed and anxious on the day like you don't like what they do and it can really ruin how you feel especially if you don't like what you look like in pictures which are obviously going to be lasting a really long time so what i would say about makeup artists is there are thousands like you're not going to be short of a makeup artist 100 what i would say is that 
every single makeup artist is different. They've got a different style, they use different products. They're all unique and you've got to find what works for you. My sister-in-law, for example, is absolutely stunning. Without makeup, she has the most gorgeous eyes and cheekbones and face. And I personally think she doesn't need a really, really full coverage type look. And she went for someone that suited that. She went for someone that made her look naturally beautiful and simply just enhanced her features. Whereas for me, because I have problematic skin and I have more scarring and acne, I personally feel more comfortable in something a lot more full coverage. And so I went for someone that specializes in that and she's amazing at doing that without making it look cakey so there's lots of different styles i also booked the hair and makeup artist for my mum but also my sister-in-law's mum and her grandma and you also need to find people that can work with maybe older skin because of course they might have more fine lines or wrinkles they might have gray hairs and you want to make sure that someone makes them feel beautiful too because makeup sits very differently on younger skin versus older skin so again you want to make sure they're experienced in different age groups when you're booking that so when it comes to makeup and hair please allow enough time so that if you don't like it they can fix it and um, they often want to take pictures of you for their social media so they can show on their portfolio their looks so allow time for that but yeah the makeup artist and the hair artist, especially when the morning events are, come early. Like, they come early. It's not an exaggeration. There were some times that they came, I think, at like 3 and 4 a.m., which is ridiculous, I know. But you can never start too early. Trust me, every single event, we were still, like, rushing by the end. I personally think you need one and a half hours minimum for makeup and one and a half hours minimum for hair. That's in total, but sometimes they can work simultaneously. You need to make sure they're okay with that. But a lot of the time I allowed at least three hours for me and at least three hours for my mum. So that is why we had to start really early. What I also would say about hair and makeup is please be honest. Because if you don't like what they have done and you don't say anything because you're too scared or you're polite. And trust me, I've been there. You're the only person that's going to be let down and be upset by that because you're not going to like how you look like. So again, look in the mirror as you're going through and as they're doing each step. Just check that everything is okay. So yeah. Pick your makeup artist wisely, have a trial if you need one, be honest and allow enough time and keep checking in regularly with them so that you are 100% happy with the look and you feel and look your best. Right, next are just a few tips that I learned along the way and I just want you guys to know. So firstly, weddings are absolutely exhausting. This was my first like really, really close big Indian wedding. I've had a couple of my cousins get married but they weren't huge so it was like very manageable, really enjoyable. But weddings can be so tiring. And as I mentioned, some of the makeup artists come at like 3 a.m. And I would just suggest sleeping at any given moment and point that you can. So the days that I knew that they were coming at 3 a.m. the next day, I was napping the afternoon before because I just wanted to get in as much sleep as possible. I don't know if that makes sense, but I just wanted to be fueled as much as I could be so that when I woke up at four, I didn't feel awful. The other thing is that when your hair and makeup is done, you're not gonna be inclined to like have a big fat meal, unless it's at the event, obviously, like that's different, but I mean like breakfast, lunch, whatever. So I personally think like get food that you can eat as snacks, like brunch bars, things that aren't gonna mess up your makeup, you know, soup, milkshakes, whatever it is, just things that are gonna fill you up and give you energy without messing up your makeup. Also just carry some snacks with you because they're might be times where you're running around and you end up just not being able to have a meal so it would have been great if I just had like a couple of snacks in my bag that I could have just quickly eaten on the go and when it comes to drink yeah it's really important to stay hydrated especially if it's like a summer wedding but the struggle of going to the toilet when you're wearing a lenga that is like poofy with like 10 layers of can can and netting I've never experienced struggle like that in my life um so yeah, I just ended up not drinking any water because I just couldn't afford to go to the toilet, which is really bad. And I don't really know how to get around that. And if anyone has any tips, drop them in the comments below. But I really struggled with that. And it's just something people don't talk about. And the last thing I would say, and this is probably more so if you are like the wedding family or the bride and groom, is that there's so many people that come to weddings. And I'm not going to be giving any like wedding advice because it wasn't my wedding. But one thing I did notice is that my family and my sister-in-law's family, they're so giving and kind and they want to accommodate for everyone but at the end of the day you can't please everyone and sometimes you just have to make decisions you've got to do what's best for the bride and groom for upset people like it's gonna happen it's just how weddings are and sometimes especially in big indian weddings there's always like 
an element of politics and a lot of people involved. So please don't try and please everyone. You're gonna end up just not pleasing yourself. That's just kind of like the tips I had from just like getting ready and outfits and shopping and prep and I hope that was helpful. I feel like I would have loved to have known all of that stuff or thought about it at least before getting married. I was about to say I'm not getting married, but before getting ready for my brother's wedding. So yeah, if you like the video, please don't forget to like it below. Subscribe to my channel and I'll catch you guys in the next video. I can't wait to bring you lots more content this month, so stay tuned and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!